der wir haben Tag. Oh, it's 11.35, Saturday. I just finished work, got home, showered, and I took happy hour with me today. And right now I'm comfortably lying in bed and rest. And I was thinking about the topic I want to talk about on the podcast. I've been thinking about integrity for like the past couple of days. But something came up. One of my friend, my good friend, she's an art teacher. She retired. And her father went into the hospital. Uh, and she sent me the text to pray for her dad, which I did. And her dad is okay now, transfer out from the ICU to the regular, regular rooms. And she said that she feel extremely tired when she returned from the hospital. And I told her about my experience because I was in and out of the hospital like for many years because my dad was just pretty ill. Um, and I told her that the exhaustion from looking after the patient is easily can be solved by, you know, hiring a nurse. Because you usually, you can't, you just can't stay in the hospital and take care of the patient and try to get rest at the same time. It's just not possible because whoever the patient is, because I've been having sleeping overs by the hospital bed for many, many times, you just, you can't get any rest because they just, waking up constantly all the time and you cannot get sleep at all it's like for every 30 minutes you just need to get up and help because they need something so after a few times i just always i read a you know a hire a nurse to take care of my dad then i visit him after work it's the money is fair, but it's not cheap. But considering you can have better energy to continue with your work, your day, and when you come back, you're not as tired. You can visit, you can talk, you know, to to the patient with a clear mind. If you stay in the hospital, it's going to drive you crazy. But that's just on the the actual hard work side on the hospital trip. Uh, I actually told her that, you know, visiting the hospital, that every journey, every time I went to the hospital, it actually, it's kind of the, the journey and the things that you, you don't get to see and feel but right there in the hospital, you just sort of see life from another angle that you don't normally think about. I basically just tell her that, you know, besides the fact that you, you, you are worrying about your dad and being tired, taking care of him, Actually, it's a good, it's a good trip. It's a good journey to the hospital. You know, because you realize how many people are struggle to get healthy and struggle with illness that sometimes cannot be cured. And you see a lot of older people, they're just basically in the end of their life. Just lying there. There's basically no life there 
as they are waiting and as their families are waiting. And it really wakes you up in some ways. If you ever think that, you know, life is just this every day waking up, going to work, coming home, business, then you are like totally wrong. It's not it. Life is just so uncertain that hospitals are not just for the older people. I've seen, I've seen in the ER, there was one time, maybe last year, I was in the ER with my dad and there was a girl, she was pulled in and her mom was by her side and she just, I remember she was holding her head. She just like whispering, like saying, my head, it's, it, it aches like crazy, I feel like it's going to explore. She didn't say much, but from the expression from her face and her voice and her body just curly together and holding her hand, you, you, can, you can tell that she's in, in extremely pain. And she came in and she, her bed rest, like right across us. I was, yeah, always looking around when I was in the ER because this is waiting for the doctor to transfer, you know, your family into the former, you know, hospital bed, or they tell you you can, you can take the medicine and take them out, and usually just take hours and hours waiting. And I usually don't look at my phone when I'm outside, and especially in the hospital, I just always look around, see, you know, what people are doing, what people are talking about, and sometimes I talk to the, you know, people who came into the hospital and talk to them about my experience and ask about, you know, what happened to the family members and why they are here. But anyways, I just always look in and she got, she got taken out for like, maybe after 15 or 20 minutes. Um, the nurse and a doctor check her for a little bit and then they pull her out. And from my perspective, I think she, maybe she just had some kind of headaches or something. And I don't know where she went. I just know that, you know, she's out of the ER. And I just sit there and continue waiting. And then after, I don't know how long, um, maybe like an hour or two, I decided to take a walk outside because I've been sitting there waiting for too long. And I just walk out of the ER, try to go out of the ER. There's two glass doors. And after the glass door, then there's outside of the ER, outside of the hospital for the parking lot. And I was, as I was walking out, I saw the mother who came with that girl with a headache. And I saw her crying, and there's another guy standing next to her. And I just noticed that right away, and I stopped. I didn't head out, so the glass door is automatically open. And I just stepped back a little bit, because I sort of want to know what happened. And I know something's wrong, because her mother is crying. And I forgot the relative or the mother is on the phone and they say that she's gone. And I was like, I have like goosebumps right away all over my body and I got shocked. Because she, she looks so young, maybe like 20 something. And just within two, three hours, her life ended just like that. 
I don't know, maybe she has some kind of long time illness. It must be like that. I don't know what kind of disease she had. But anyways, it was three hours of time. Then her life is over. Like I see, I saw so many things in a hospital that it really makes me humble. You just feel, you just feel very, 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 very small. In the reality of life, it's like you're in a dream when you don't see the reality of life because you gotta go to work every day. Life just continue, you know, and sometimes you're just in a rush and you forget about things and you just feel tired. Maybe you don't like your job. Maybe you stuck in a relationship. Maybe you don't have a good connection with your family and all that. But you know what? It really don't matter when that day come. If you don't get things solved, and by that time, it's, everything's just too late. And at that point, your life will be stuck at some point where you are not happy about your life. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, oh, and I especially don't like people covering in white blanket and then push away in front of me. I saw that multiple times in a hospital as well. I hate blood. I got weak on my knees instantly, even see a little cup. So regarding about seeing people covering in white blanket and being pushed away in the death bed in front of me, I cannot tell you how much that shocked me. You don't feel anything, but you definitely think about a lot of things after you return. I didn't tell my friend all about these things. I actually don't talk about what I actually see in the hospital. Because you know, then when you, when you, when you got home, then you reflect and you ask yourself, about life and how you should handle yourself, how you should stay humble and grateful with the life that you have and all that. And when you meet up with your friends, sometimes you don't recall this big, super big journey that you just win. I think I should talk about this with them sometimes. Yeah, this is kind of like really important issues. But you know how it is sometimes the gathering you just want to talk about easy stuff because you just want to relax, but these kind of things, you, you can really help your friends out to share your experience about, you know, what you see in life for real, not just some unimportant stuff. But anyways, the go goes back to what I tell my friend about, you know, every trip I went to the hospital is actually not... torture or a bad experience. It is a bad experience, in fact. And my dad has, you know, said the last words to me, <laughs> like when I was very, very young, the very first couple of times he went into the hospital because he's a smoker and his heart just couldn't breathe and we got on the emergency car. Like I'm a regular to the 911 car. And it was not funny. And the car is always driving very, very fast. And the bed is constantly shaking left to right. Like not actually, not the bed, it's just the, the person my like dad. And the sounds of the, the alarm on top of the car, just everything. It's pretty surreal. It's very intense, actually. And what was I talking about? And yeah, 
it was actually bad experience. Every time you went to the hospital, in fact, it was a bad experience. But what you actually get to learn from the hospital is super real. It's really, really super real. You know, if you had a chance to, if it, to just to visit a friend of a friend or a, you know. Someone you don't know well. If you ever get a chance, when you get to visit in the hospital, you know, put down your phone. Really, look around you. There's a lot of thing for you to really understand and feel, and then come home. You know, do some homework on yourself. These are the things that you can never learn in school, or hang out with friends. Yeah, maybe on some documentary on TV, but you know, I don't really trust. Or everybody says on TV or the media. So I think with every experience you had in your life, almost all all the time, the worst experience. Always brings out the best conclusion of what you should do with your life. You know, upcoming. That's like a definite fact because I I've been through I've been through a lot of bad experience, and I always always end up feeling grateful about what I went through. And in the end, you you don't really remember the torture and the pain anymore because you just grow so much from the experience, and it just makes you humble and more grateful about a lot of things. So, I guess we're not talking about integrity today. But we're definitely going to talk about integrity some other time. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to name this podcast. You know, hospital travel, something like that. I don't know. But I just wanted to say that if it's hard for you to understand how uncertain life is, then when you have time. You know, they're a great restaurant in a hospital. You know, in my hospital, they're they're a great food place. I suggest you to go to the hospital alone. Look around and listen to what people are talking about. Listen to their stories, and take a look at yourself. You know, go then afterwards go eat alone. Stay quiet for a little bit then. You know, reflect. You're not going to regret it. You better, you know, learn so much from it. You know, stay humble. It's very important because you and I and everyone around you. It's like super small, comparing to the uncertainty of life, and what's gonna happen next to life. Yeah, I've been thinking about that Las Vegas shooting a lot past couple of days. I even oh try to look over some clue from some independent media's, but I just end up feeling, you know, upset and angry. And you never get, you never really get into the real answer of everything because, you know, a lot of the news outlet and the media they're just owned by big companies, and you don't get to know the truth. Matter of fact, you can search, you can study, you can try to know, but. There's really very limited information that you can get. So I think, I think, 
a lot of times you just need to figure out a lot of things starting from yourself first just put yourself in a place that's you know down to earth and healthy and happy and then figure out what you can do as a part of the community of the world and share something share something positive share something that you know share your experience i think that's going to help big or small like i said hey our voice is small we're not big media but with every with every single good intention and energy we put out it's definitely definitely going to be contagious and it's gonna pass on however big or small that is but hey you're doing something and like i said just a girl with something to say and i guess i'm always going to have something to say oh let's see this one's going i'm renting about hospital about 21 minutes already so i think yeah this is it i'm actually not feeling tired and uh, i've been doing pretty well about getting up early i've been getting up around my goal is like eight 8 a.m. and I try to finish work early. For the past couple of days, I got up around 9, 8.30. I got to work before 12 and I end my work around 8, 8.30. Tonight is the weekend, so I work. I got to work around 12 and I got home, finished work around 9 and I got home around you know, 9.30 or something. So that's pretty good already. It's, uh, I'll try to work less job-wise and trying to do more on um, adjusting the podcast and also the revolution. I wanted to do the podcast and form a radio no, not radio, video for the, my morning prayers. Uh, still need a lot of time to work on that, so I'm going to try, but it's like for the coming one or two weeks, it's the big sale in the nearby uh, shopping mall, so it's very busy two weeks I'm going to have, but I'm going to try. Um... It feels pretty good getting up early, though, I have to say, even though I feel, like, pretty upset and angry <laughs> when I wake up. <laughs> because I usually got up around 11, and I got to work, like, 2 or 3, and I finished work around 10. But when I got home, and I have to work on my project, on music, and the revolution, I, I got to be, like, really late, 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. sometimes, and... I don't think it's a healthy habit, not a healthy habit, so I want to change it. And I try to just like, you know, give myself some pep on the head as just when I wake up. I have a notification on my phone I say, life is rich and fulfilled and remember to smile. I try to look at that when I turn off my alarm and I look at that, I force a smile on my face, it definitely feels good and I know you know, if you force yourself to put a smile on your face as you get up, then you're training yourself, right? I'm doing that, and that actually feels pretty good. So I encourage you to do that as well. Just force a smile, right? Fake it till you make it. I don't like that sentence, but I mean, fake a smile like practice to train yourself to smile as a habit. But anyways, that, that's working for me. So, yeah, still feeling a little bit angry when I get up early, but I'm going to try. I feel not as tired at night as I did 
when I woke up late. So I think I'm going to stick with getting up 8.30 and 9. I think that's pretty healthy enough. And go to bed before 2, maybe 1. It's like pretty you know, healthy time. Still, I want to push my sleeping time a little bit earlier. Right now, it's like, oh, no, not good. It's 12, midnight already. I got to add this podcast and upload it. And maybe I want to do a revolution quote today. I don't know. I think I have time today. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I rest for one or two days already because I feel a little bit tired adjusting my time, getting up early and got home. I just want to empty myself a little bit, not to like just keep pushing myself. Because, you know, sometimes you just need to rest a little bit, recharge, get back, then full blast. That's the way I do it. I don't know how other people do it, but that's how I do it. Like, just I always follow how my body tells me. I'm just not going to force it. But anyways, I'm going to end this podcast here. The Nameless Podcast. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but... I'm going to name it, and it's the weekend, and I hope you all can have a relaxed and happy weekend, and remember to always take time for yourself to quiet down, you know, don't even read, don't even write anything, don't look at your phones, don't look at your computer, just, you know, quiet down, relax, clean the house, walk the dog. If you don't have a dog, adopt one. Dog are the best thing ever. You're not going to regret it. Take a walk. Just listen to in the little leaves. By the riverbanks. Look at the people. Look at what they're doing. You know, listen to what they are talking sometimes. It really helps. You know, you know stories in between people's conversation. Those things are the best. Oh, I love listening to people talk. Never ever I put my headphones on my ears when I'm outside. Never. I choose to listen to the noise in the city and people talking and the wind blowing over the headphones. No, I don't, I don't love music that much. I love the music of life so much more than music itself. Life is music. Have a happy weekend and always remember life is the best music. I will talk to you soon.